See, all the artists that aren't from New York, they're smart. They want to take you to dinner. They, they check in on you. They say hi to you. They ask you how your family's doing. But I already know you don't give a fuck about me. So I don't, I don't, I don't care if you got a good record. But see, other DJs fell for it. This guy really likes me. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been in a nightclub in New York City with an out-of-town artist, and the DJ will play 15 of his fucking records. And there'll be three New York artists, and them niggas sitting there, not even shouting they in the club, and they shit not spinning. I was like, all right, I, I see what this is. No problem, I got this. So then I went on my New York shit. I went on my, this is what New York City sounds like. The first night I went on what New York City sounds like, Future tweeted, I know you on that shit flex, but when my shit come out, my shit spinning. And my mind, I was like, oh, so I was right about y'all niggas. Y'all niggas was always trying to corner the market. No problem, I love you when your shit come out, I'm playing it, but I'm on this right now. And really think about this one. Um, half. Half what? Half of them. Half since, of them. Since, since, since the inception? Since I came in the game? Since you came in the game. Do you respect artists? And I'm going somewhere with well, this. Well, why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> um, All right. Um, I pride myself on, which is what has probably um, made me uh, a little bit unwanted in the music businesses. I pride myself in I don't need an artist. I don't need the artist. That's my motto. And I say it on the radio and I... Did you always feel that way? Um, no. I, I remember... Because everybody mm. comes, just to help you out, right? Everybody comes in the music industry thinking we gonna hold hands and it's mm. kumbaya. Mm. I thought that, rude, I didn't think that. Everybody does. Then you get a rude awakening. My rude awakening was in 1990, before Red Man had a deal and before Biggie had a deal and before I was on the radio, we would play the club circuit together. They didn't have songs, they used to do freestyles. And we were just moving, like, you know. It wasn't mainstream yet, so if you could put a thousand people, people would hire you. So, Red Man, Biggie, Naughty by Nature, Onyx. Um, I mean, you name it, anything. Uh, Tribe Called Quest, all those things at the time, I was coming up with them. And when the bad boy era, you know, I don't know if people are familiar with Craig Mack, rest in peace, but you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the song Flavor in Your Ear. But that was prob, I'm gonna tell you something, and I don't know who's ever gonna do the story, but Flavor in Your Ear is the most important single record of the 90s because it ushered in another era. It ushered in, um, before Flavor in Your Ear, it was Wu-Tang, it was uh, 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 Tribe Called Quest, all these artists, but it was grimy. It was grimy hip hop. And, huh? Snoop, where was Snoop at the time? Um, well, my, mind you, all the shit I'm naming, Dre and Snoop are the king. 
We were all fighting in New York for second place. That was that was the that was the bar. But if you listen to that album, I mean, it's kind of grimy. The singles was polished, but the album was grimy. So when I, my first, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, man, Onyx and 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 Naughty by Nature, I, we were someplace. And niggas was like, you playing that whack shit, you playing that bullshit, that, that pop shit. Who's saying this, the artists themselves? The artists. The artists was like, and they was like, I, they was all standing over there, nobody's talking to me. So I was like, I mean, I, I keep it a thousand with you, man. I cried that night, my feelings was hurt, because I came up with them. And I'm thinking they're gonna adapt to the program and start making the shit that these niggas is making. But they never picked up the ball. And I don't wanna say pick up the ball, because I wanna be specific with what I'm saying. That was the beginning of me learning some artists are great and they're gonna be great, but they just have their amount of time and that's it. Oh, they, they, go, they made two albums, four albums, but that's it. I don't use it as fall off. I use it at, I learned that time is that niggas just have their time. And to be honest, a lot of DJs that were huge at the time did not want to adapt to the bad boy Snoop era. They wanted to stay gritty. They wanted to stay Nas. They wanted to stay Tribe Called Quest and everything but what they missed was mtv hot 97 a station in dc called pgc pal 106 there was this thing called the box right where you could pay for whatever video you wanted to see and whatever you, if you call 10 times the, the video played 10 times i used to watch that channel because if somebody's putting their own hard on money to see a video you know where the game's going and they didn't want to accept it and to be honest, I made that decision then. That was first amongst 10 different decisions that I made. I made that decision. I want to climb into the new era. And that was the new era at the time. That was 94. What time of year Flaming Air came out? 94. 94. Before that, it was backpacks, gritty, coming to club, where you, and the, the weed, no champagne. Niggas was drinking Long Island iced teas. And that was it. Puff came in the game, now the clubs are selling out of the bottles of the liquor because they putting it in the videos. Now the clubs is packed, and now the girls like it. Yeah. That You know, it, it, it evolved. And that's the part, they hurt my feelings, and we've become better. I remember being at a Wu-Tang concert. Is that, is that the point where you said, screw the honest, I don't need them. I gotta be bigger than them. One more incident happened. Go ahead. I was playing at a Wu-Tang concert, Summer Jam. I'm setting up my shit. I don't remember what album they had. One of the niggas in the Wu-Tang Clan, his main members, threw a battery at me. Mm. The battery whisked by my head, the big joint, not the little joint, the big one. And I didn't move, D I stayed, I still played. A D battery, probably. <laughs> but what I knew was is, I get it, that's the way y'all feel, and that's the way y'all feel about me now which is cool. Because what I learned about artists is, ain't one artist ever come up to me and said, yo, Flex, that last album I did, it was trash, right? It was bad. Nigga, it was bad in ain't cell, right, nigga? <laughs> you mad, you, but you were mad at me at the time. But your shit ended up not selling anyway. What do you think, I pulled it a bullhorn and told niggas not to buy it? <laughs> you didn't want it. But then, that's when they come around and we, we can have good dialogue after that. You know, because I'm going to keep it a thousand. A lot of artists that hated my guts and, and never supported me. Them niggas had hot albums. Them niggas brick. Now they retro. And I'm still here. And sometimes I play in the retro clubs like, what up, buddy? <laughs> I'm still hot. Because <laughs> I already know where they time, where they, where they time on. Because rappers don't like DJs. Rappers don't like DJs, they like, because they like the ones they can control. And the niggas that they control, I've seen a lot of guys, the street, street niggas come home from jail, they hanging with this DJ nigga. And I'm sorry to keep using the word nigga, I'm sorry. 
but it just. But drug, and I'm, I'm fine to say it. I come from the Bronx, born in the Bronx. Every big kingpin that went to jail when I was young, when he come home, I'm his first stop. Yo, Flex, what you got? I heard you that nigga. I got a rapper now. I can't play. What the fuck you mean I can't play? Because drug kingpins talk. I ain't gonna play the drug kingpin in Queens. I'm not gonna play the one in, in Jersey or Newark. I ain't playing your shit. Because the minute I play one of y'all, y'all think I'm food. And I ain't food. Punch me in the face first. I'm going to keep my integrity. I'm gonna keep, I ain't, ain't going to take your bread. Because when you don't take their bread, the next thing is fear. That's the next thing. It's fear. How can we be? How can we make him afraid? How can we make him? I ain't afraid. I'm going up if I got to goon up. I'll get a couple dudes we hang out every night. I've had street situations where I don't want to hurt nobody. But I've had street situations where the, the nigga reckon I ain't playing. And he attached to a drug dealer. Tell Flex he can't come to the club tonight. And then the club called me all shook up and said, you, <laughs> you can't come to the club tonight, this guy's scaring us. <laughs> I'm being out there, don't worry about it. I'm going to come 10 deep, we're going to post up, we're going to be in the club, because this is all I got. Yeah. You ain't taking from me what I work for. I work to make that bomb mean something. I picked 10 good records to make that bomb mean something. You think you can pay me or scare me and I'm gonna play your shit? I'm not playing nothing. Fast forward. I know it's bad, I'm sorry, it's bad as I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I, I love it, I love it. Sorry. Cause it's honest. Mm. But I watched you cross lines. I think every, yes. Oh. I think everybody watched you cross lines that not just no DJ would cross, but nobody in the industry would cross. Correct. Nikki at a height. Went bananas on the radio. Jay-Z. Drake. I like these guys so much. <laughs> yeah. It shows. Cardi. <laughs> Breakfast like Club. Mm. I like those guys. <laughs> Your ex wife. I like her too, man. We got a better thing. We better now. I love you, Monica. <laughs> Flakes. Hmm? What? Why? Because, no, 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 not the why first. Because you gotta. I'm really have, a nice guy, people. I'm not Because this is important. The, the upper management mm. has to love you because those artists bring revenue Correct. to the station. Correct. Hot 97 does Summer Jam year over year. Mm -hmm. You need them. Yes. What makes you decide I'm gonna jump out the window and I'm gonna go at the biggest artists in the game in their program? Um, and where did you get this favor? We're hot. Well, I don't get high. I know y'all think I'm lying. And I'm, I'm not knocking anybody that does. But it's just, to, I don't get high. I don't, I don't buy drugs. I don't drink. I don't steal. I don't got skeletons in the closet. I know that for a fact about myself. And I knew if this is the game I wanted to do, that's what I'm going to do. And I've watched air personalities, DJs, and TV personalities with skeletons on situations where you were supposed to flare up right there, but you didn't. I wonder why. And I would look at those situations and I'd be like, so people use their behind the scenes muscle to quiet you. Now, people listen to me because I, I get my opinion. And those artists, all of them know his opinions is what's important. If we can stifle his opinion, I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you an artist story. An artist air personality story. I got a good friend of mine, 
not my best friend, but a great friend. He was having an affair with a chick. His wedding was coming up. First an artist, and then a radio personality, because I ain't got no skeletons. Yo, you say something on that radio tonight, that's what nigga said to me, if you talk about that, your yeah, man, we're going to put that girl, we're going to put her on Front Street that he's banging. I call my man, bro, tell your wife something tonight. <laughs> I'm going on this box to what I got to do. I told them, we not stressing that. I'm going to hammer you tonight. That's a well-known artist? Super. And super well-known personalities. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I did what I did. Because I felt now, you push me, right? So, what, what you learn is, if they could control you, or take away, I don't want to take away what's valuable to that artist. If you're a good lyricist, I respect you. Listen, I've had, I ain't gonna say what artist. We've had super run-ins in the clubs. I play their records. I don't care if you call my mother fat. But that's you got that's, a hot one. I think that I'm getting that shit on. Incredibly important because you're one of the only DJs I ever met. It's not personal. No, it's not personal to me because I I understand where they at. If if if, if the artist is in a place where his career is a little funny, I get it. You shouldn't be mad at me. No, I'm let's, only let's, let's, mad let's at. talk about an artist who's hot. You go and Drake, crazy. No. But you still played his record. I did, I did. Heavy. I can tell another artist story. Feel free. It's one of the one of the artists he said since we've been up here. Called my boss. My boss in um I never told this story to. Called my boss in um Well, the main office in Indianapolis in Indianapolis, and we had a uh, 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 another boss in LA. And the artist said to the boss, I would do a lot more of your concerts if Flex didn't work here. Now, I always understand that a day like that, not can come, will come. But I know if I keep my shit hot in the street, Cause it's about making people money and I'm making y'all money. It doesn't matter. So he said what he said. They was like, that's probably not gonna happen. Kept pushing. He then went to New York and talked to my bosses. They said that, see, they said the same exact thing. See, that's sucker shit. Oh, you know, I would really be with y'all. You know, but they didn't say if he doesn't work. They said, you know, but flex works here, I can't. That's the alley-oop for the snake, for the knife. Nah, I know I'm hot, so I'm not worried about it. So, but in my mind, it's because you feel I exposed you or you feel like I said something about you that doesn't matter. And let me tell you something. YouTube comments are not fake. You wanna know why? When people say something about you, it may not be the truth, but it's perception. That's just the way the person is perceiving you. It don't mean it's true. Cool. So if I'm giving my opinion on an artist, because mind you, any artist that's big now, when they was little, they offered me the bread. Or they had their mans come up, your flex, I got this five grand, this 10 grand, can we get you this car? Can we go to eat? I used to say, my nigga, I can fly myself around. I don't need your little t plane ticket to Vegas, I'm good. You know, can we do this? No, I'm good, I'm good. So they go from that level, which means whatever they wanted me to play at the time, I didn't play until they got hot. Or they got a record that means something, I played it. Now it goes to, I'm hot, this is great. Me and Flex is cool to, I remember when the nigga didn't play my shit. I remember they didn't take their money. Then, I, then they get here. Fuck him. All right, cool. I'm all right with that. But if you say something about me, 
I'm going to answer you. I never started. I, this, let me tell you something. There's not one beef. I swear to you, I've ever started. If y'all feel different, y'all can correct me. I, it's always my answer that makes them upset because I don't take your money. I don't take, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something about that. I know I'm saying take money and it's a little broad generic. I'm going to tell you about the music industry and what it's built on. And I don't care who I offend. The labels pay people. So they pay for streams. They pay for spins. They pay for everything. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> I'm from the label side. So um, in doing that, That's a system created from the 30s, the 40s. But I'm going to tell you what it's created for. In the, there's stations in Alabama that report, when I say report, they report to Billboard or they report to Media Base. Yeah. Media Base. So Media Base is a place that counts spins and kind of tells you if you're record how many times it's spun this week. There's some great radio stations that are very influential, right? But they... um. They're influential, but they, they don't make enough money to sustain themselves. This was originally a format to buy radio stations t-shirts and vans and help. Somewhere along the line, the shit tore did to buying houses. In the 60s, I, are you people familiar with a guy named Dick Clark? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there was a guy. Ooh. You gotta give me a minute, man. Uh, he, I, <sighs> Where are we going? It's important. Dick Clark. You see how you know Dick Clark is his big personality? Yeah. Now he got his job. The nigga that was bigger than him, ten times bigger than him, got caught taking payola. He's the reason why there's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He was the first, he was the guy, the first guy to say the word rock and roll. He was the man. If he did a party, 5,000 deep. There's a picture in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the shit looking like the garden and people dancing with, with bands. Like this, like, and rock and roll was our hip hop. It brought the energy, it brought the excitement, it brought everything. And I'm gonna remember, I swear to God, I'm gonna Google his name. Please somebody hit Google and just say the founder of rock and roll and tell me the name. Anyway, so Dick Clark, this guy gets caught for payola and everything. Dick Clark was the next man up on Tibet. This guy had a TV show. I guess you guys see like New Year's Eve with Dick Clark and, and American Bandstand, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, white guy, had a big TV show before Dick Clark. He let a white girl and a black girl dance together. They canceled the show. He was the biggest shit ever, sliced bread. Did you look it up? I don't know what is. Founder of rock and roll. The man who coined the rock and roll. Alan Freed. Who said that? What's his name? Alan Freed. Alan Freed. It's him. Public Enemy used to talk about him early on the records. So that's all to say, they was the first guys arrested for payola and taking money. Now, pay, taking money to play records is not illegal. I know that sounds stupid, right? You have to disclose it. You ever see it when you hear a commercial sign that says, this has been brought to you or paid by, boom. That's the part you're supposed to say when you take money to play a record. This has been sponsored by the nigga who gave me the brand. <laughs> now, the reason why DJs don't do that is because it takes away their integrity. Because then you go, nigga, don't tell me that's hot. You took money for that. So then, I'm not saying that it's, I, I, I got no judgment on it. It's the only reason I'm here and on top of my game 20 years later. When an artist calls me and, and tries to talk to me like I work for him, I go, I'm not the one you gave the money to, bro. You got the wrong number today. And that sets me off. I Like, because... Don't get it twisted. 
On the other side, a radio personality or a DJ, even if you're in the club or the smallest level, you play a bar, you're supposed to enhance an artist's career. That's your job. That's my job. My job is to play what I consider is good on a street level and bring it to the masses. So, yeah, I might get a little testy, but I get testy when it's, don't, don't talk to me like that. I, I already know I'm here to kind of serve you. Like, I'm not okay with that, you know, because sometimes DJs lose track of something. You ever listen to the rate? Don't lie. We're going to do truth today. You ever listen to the radio and hear a song you say, why the fuck are they playing that? You, nobody ever does that in here? <laughs> All in, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever say, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Why is he playing that? Right? If you, t if you turn me on and you hear me do one of those, you go, all right, maybe he's having an off day. <laughs> if you turn me on again and you hear me playing records like that, you go, yo, man, this, what's he doing? How many times before you don't come back? Like, so I, I'm, that's to say is, of course an artist wants to pay me to play their music because you want what I built. It, it, look, it's like if, if you guys got a lawnmower company and you cutting great grass and another house, of course they want you to cut it. But you know, we're not doing it for free. Like, and then so then, and this is like, yo, let me keep having my integrity of what the reason why those artists you like me or you want to get me the record purchase is because I only do that with a handful of joints. Don't tell me what I should do or not. But you know what I do like about what you do? And we gonna fast forward a little bit. I was mad at you for years, no, just like a lot of people. No, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell, no, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you why. We went through. It was a. It was, it was a period in New York. 05, 06, 07, 08, who knows, right? South was on fire. Correct. But I don't want to know what's popping in Magic City on Sunday People night. blame me for that. They blame me I for that. I blame you for that. Blame me for that. And you deserve it. But what I love... <laughs> yo! <laughs> but what I love, and it comes back down to the integrity, you're the leader of the pack, right? A lot of people looking to flex what's to play. But if you're only playing music from out of town, a lot of New York artists feel, I don't have a shot. Correct. What turned it around? What brought in, what ushered in the era of, this is what New York sounds like? Because it's a big turnaround for the city. And where I was, when I started, when I, when I when I started doing car show tours and I started playing out the city, I would go to clubs. And I had the tunnel, mm -hmm. right? So my, my gauge was always, the first record I could really say, I, Juvenile had this record called How. And, and back that ass up. And back before, it was before back that ass. Back that ass up is one everybody knows, but he had the house. And Jay jumped on the ring. And Jay, because I brought it back to New York. Mm -hmm. I was in a club. I don't. I don't think I was in New York. I don't know where I was. Maybe New Orleans. New Orleans. And it turned the club upside down. And well, Master P had made had poked his head out in New York and had some good records. Pride. But this was the first time. Now I'm a person. If I see a record react and the DJ's playing it, I immediately come home and play it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because to me, the nightclub, the nightclub is the testing ground for anything. You know why? You can't pay somebody to dance. You can't pay them to request it. It's a true place of, you know. Now, the second most important place is outside the club. Because when people drive around the club trying to pick up girls, whatever song they playing in, if you're in your car and your joint is clean, you're at the car wash, you want the shit you like, and you, 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 you cruising the block. Mind you, which is the first place I heard protect your neck. I never hated that record, but they drove around the block and I heard it. Fast forward. So I brought those records back because when I brought them to the tunnel, it reacted. 
Like people, I brought cash money to this. I don't, I don't, Glenn, the, the, the South, amazing, to this day. Well, amazing run, when, amazing run. Yes, when it got to the ringtone records and the funny goofy I'm, I'm, shit and the goofy dances, <laughs> I started to check out. When did you say, <laughs> when did you say, it's time to bring New York back. I'm gonna tell, yeah. tell you why. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why, and it goes back to something else. Every young New York artist was paying DJs to get their records played, and I made a decision that if I get a song in the email, or I get I run up on a kid on the street and he gives me his flash drive and I like it, or if you're bubbling on YouTube, or whatever movement you have, I'm gonna play. It. And if it's and I, I don't, it may have started around um, what artist? Bobby Who? Shmurda, Bobby Shmurda. Um, I felt like there was. I don't know. I felt like there was something before that. No. Um, Shmurda was what? How many years ago was that? Three, three years. Fourteen. Joey Bowers. Nah. 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 Wait, who said that? Hey, no, no, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Now, nah, you drive your ass, man. That's no, cool. Don't, don't, don't back up on it. It's cool. I, would, I like Joey Badass, too. No, I'm just backing up Johnny Chaps because I work for him. I'm going to tell you something about Joey Badass, unfortunately. He's a talented New York artist that. Look, there's some things that I can blame myself about, to be honest. Um, unfortunately, the city didn't support him like they should have. It shouldn't have supported, it should have supported him more considering he's from Brooklyn and considering his excitement he had with him. I think, um, ASAP Mob too, I miss that, you know, and a lot of other people, you know, I think there's groups that before the city kind of changed, you know, uh, um, the DJs and the artists were having a weird space for many years of DJs asking for money, artists being cocky. We had a problem for a minute and you know, it was just chip on the shoulder. And, and, and I think it changed. I mean, Bobby Schmurda, Young M.A., Fetty being from Jersey. Takashi 69. Look, I like Takashi 69. I always did from the door. I, I'm gonna tell you something. I know a lot of people didn't like the music. And here's a part two when we talk about taking money. Every rapper, every known rapper asked me, why the fuck you playing that whack ass shit? That nigga's whack, you whack, and everything else. But I'm gonna tell you what I based Takashi on. Takashi, I, I got when I'm on the radio, I keep six people around me. All of them are DJs. Maybe one ain't. And I listen to conversation they have. I listen to what records they like. I listen to what they talk about. Now, they're not all in the club, but they 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 like music. So they they they, they own it. So then one of my bloggers showed me Takashi 69 on YouTube. And I said, that's Onyx. The record, the Onyx was, what did he say? Go your guns. Yeah, he, he was, I don't know the words. You know how the beginning is, either, uh, 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 like that energy in the beginning, acapella. And Onyx was, take them up, take them up, bring them up, dead. And it was acapella, it was the same energy to me. So I was like, I like this, feels like some New York shit to me. So I wasn't sold. I used to play the air record every night for two nights and I would never talk over it. I would never back announce it, nothing. I was ashamed of the record. I went to, what's the club? I went to uh, Angels. Strip club. Angels? Angels. It's packed, thousand people. I throw this shit on, keep it. Now, I'm not from Queens, but I know who the killers and the murderers are. I know who got body, whatever. The killer and the murder section is over here. Them niggas start. I'm just looking. I went back the next day. 
This is that thing, brain. Because if I see the the killers and the murderers and they like it, the 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 street people. I'm gonna tell you, there's all this blood and crypt talk. Whatever it is, they fucks with the music. I can look at a bunch of bloods. If they going crazy, I know that record's rocking. Like that, it tells you everything. So that's all to say. I know we're talking about the the New York comes back and Takashi. That was my research. But you know why the other DJs ain't play it? Cause they not in the club. They not paying attention to the movement. I don't care about his cut funny hair. You know, when I was playing Young and May, I was getting mad flat. You playing that little boy? Are you? Now, when she crossed over, when the record got super big, and I'm gonna tell you something about Young and May, that record. Every DJ in the city wanted money from them to play that record. I was at my garage where I keep my cars, and they parked the yellow school buses in front of my garage, so the kids get on the bus. So I'm out there playing with my cars, so, you know, messing around the garage and stuff. A kid walked by me and said, Joe Fletch, you got that new young M.A.? I said, oh, you mean that other record? Nah, son, the new one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. He starts playing it. He said, nah, I, I listened to it. I heard the knock. I said, I got this. That night, I went hard. Then I went to a club that weekend. I said, I'm going to just try this shit. The, shit. the club goes upside down. I back this shit up, I take out the phone. We gonna do this again. She reposted it. But then she figured out, oh shit, the record's something. And I knew, I figured out, oh, this record is something. Now, nobody in the city's playing it. Everybody got their hand out for the money, the bag. Absolute, I see you over here. I know you don't like this type of talk. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, Absolute don't like me giving up too much of the music business, right? I'm how it works behind the scenes. So nobody's playing it because they get they want the bag. This is what they this is what they do. Oh, you want me to play that? Yo, you got a budget? Nigga, what a, what's a budget? You got a budget? Right? They ask you for to play it. So now, wait. They don't take the money. I'm sorry, Press, I'm giving up a lot of insight. This is what it is. So, the, the, they don't take the money, the record ain't spending nowhere else. Me and her running the clubs, we packing shit out, we moving. Now, A Boogie. I'm gonna tell you a true story about A Boogie. A Boogie had no money, no budget, nothing. He went to a popular DJ in the city, cause they, they came to me and that DJ the same day. Yo, need you to play it. This is my whatever, whatever. Boom. The popular DJ gives him a number. Yo, call my man. How much? Yo, how much? Yo, five grand. Go fuck yourself. Boom, man, hang up. I played the record the first night. I stay on it because they was already bubbling in the club, in their neighborhood. They was from Bronx. But they was making their name uptown in Hall in, in, in uptown when uptown was popping. When when La Maria and everything's popping. So they making their name up there, even though they're from the Bronx. Now, they thought it was a given, because I'm from the Bronx. I didn't like the first couple records. But now, that same DJ calling for a birthday party this year. They said, go fuck yourself, buddy. <laughs> Fetty Wap. Everybody asked Fetty Wap for the bag for money to play his songs. I went to a strip club in Patterson. What's the, oh. There was a, you know, there's a girl named Cherry Martinez. Who knows her? You've heard of her. She was on Power 105. She was managing this artist and she called me, she said, yo, this is God Fetty Wap, I'm managing, you gotta pay attention to it, Flex. I didn't know what it was. I think she told me he was gonna be in Patterson mm -hmm. at, at it's a strip club. Dickie strip club got 500 people. What's that record? Trap Queen. Trap Queen. It turns the strip club upside down. I said to the DJ, let me get that. I, I, and then I went and started playing it afterwards, but everybody wanted bread from him. So that's why I came up with, this is what New York City sounds like, because you know what? See, all the artists that aren't from New York, they're smart. They want to take you to dinner. 
They, they check in on you. They say hi to you. They ask you how your family's doing. But I already know you don't give a fuck about me. So I don't, I don't, I don't care if you got a good record. But see, other DJs fell for it. This guy really likes me. And I'm gonna tell you something. I've been in a nightclub in New York City with an out of town artist, and the DJ will play 15 of his fucking records. And there'll be three New York artists and them niggas sitting there, not even shouting they in the club and they shit not spinning. I was like, all right, I, I see what this is. No problem, I got this. So then I went on my New York shit. I went on my, this is what New York City sounds like. The first night I went on what New York City sounds like, Future tweeted, I know you on that shit flex, but when my shit come out, my shit spinning. And my mind, I was like, Oh, so I was right about y'all niggas. Y'all niggas was always trying to corner the market. No problem. I love you when you should come out. I'm playing it. But I'm on this right now. This is what I'm at. And that's what I felt. I felt like I, I took it as in fun. I didn't, you know, I didn't take offense to it. But it made me understand, you know, New York artists should live. Why are we asking them for money? Why are we like... Why are we not giving them opportunities to live? Okay, so hold on. I didn't think I met him because I was not down. taking money to play the records. Now fuck you, no, I'm playing records. You might not be taking money to play records, mm -hmm. but you damn sure are taking the money. Like, you're greedy. When are you going to give up the crown? Oh, I can't. <laughs> you're taking like, from me. Listen to me. You're taking from you're me. You're scraping <laughs> the plate. Where everything. No, yeah, I'm gonna tell you. No, no, no. This is, this is important. This is important. This is important right here. Because you are scraping the plate. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 52 years old and I wear the crown in this city. And this is why this is important. Yes. This is not manufactured. Mm -mm. This is not accidental. You gotta love what you do. To be doing something as many years as this man has been mm. doing it. Every day I drive the West Side Highway, I drive the same way to work every day. I remember when I was out. I remember when a popular DJ, I pulled up in a 79.98 Olds, rust spots, motor ticket. And that popular DJ said to my man, rest in peace, big cat, your man is a derelict flex. I was like, no problem. I was going inside to play the club. I, li I lifted my records out. I had a piece of wire that used to hold my trunk down. And I undid the wire. I didn't care if niggas in front of the club saw me either. Unloaded my shit, went in, took the club down. I probably got 200 that night. The club probably made 40 grand. I was good. I went home. I never forget when I got fired. Let me tell you something. BLS fired me. My station, the company I worked for, ended up buying them. They playing throwbacks now. No problem. And they down the hall. <laughs> so I see them every day. It's love, but I remember when they fired me. Nothing wrong. It's not called spite. That means you're never going to put me in a position. So when I come on at 7, you can always know 6.30, I'm in that car. I'm grateful. I'm happy to go down here. Because I remember when I was on the outside. I remember when, when, when niggas was like, yo, I remember I had, a, I had a good friend. And he told me, you nice. You ain't Kid Capri. You nice. But you ain't Chad Master J. I was like, I never used to get mad at them. Because I was like, my nigga, when I, when I show you what I'm full of, when I show you what I'm made of, though, I want to shake the hand afterwards. <laughs> I want to hug. I want to see him. And, and guess what? It's not because it's anger. Because guess what? A lot of those people will say, damn, they didn't think you had an in you. That's all I want to hear. We can be friends from here. <laughs> because your energy that you gave, because you didn't give me that energy because you were jealous. You didn't give me, you had, a, you had a way of the way you felt it was. Where does this competitive energy come from? Because you're tangling. I'll tell you what it is. You tangling with everybody. Not yeah. anybody. Smoke. Everybody. I want all smoke. 
you just naturally competitive? That the Leo thing? Like, where, where does it come from? I'm Jamaican. <laughs> so when my parents came in 63, Everybody, you know, the Jamaican culture now, everybody want to be Jamaican. Everybody want to go to dreads, they want to, the gear, the garment. When I was Jamaican, when I was a kid, you got frowned on. You was a beef patty, a fucking cocoa bread, you fucking this fuck, like, you, like, you, you curry goat mother, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, I didn't even under, like, forget being African American in this country. Like, that was already in the 70s or 80s struggle. Now, the black people are like, this fucking cocoa bread. Look at this beef patty. And then, you know, you're naturally, your head's a little more nappy, your gear ain't right, because you, you got to catch up to what's going on out here. So it was like weird, you know, it was like strange. Then, so for me to even get into hip hop, I had to hide my accent. So, I couldn't show my Jamaican accent. So when, when, when a guy who was into hip hop would come to my house and hear my parents, like my parents, Are you Jamaican? Yeah, you can chill, man. <laughs> <laughs> chill. Like, you know, but I was already rolling. I was already like in the neighborhood spinning because so that was really where my competitive spirit came from because I had to snap every day. You know, all right, what do you guys call it now? You call it when somebody snaps on you. What do you guys call it? Okay. While and out is like, are you snapping on somebody? So niggas used to snap on me all day because I was Jamaican. So, all day in school. So I, I used to come, my big, my best snap was, I'm Jamaican and I'm a beef patty, no doubt. But you got a big nose and you ain't gonna be able to change that, bro. I always had a, I had an answer for everything in school. So I started to just get my momentum up, but I realized it was like early in life in school and it's about survival. And I felt like that was my first competitiveness. And then, I'm a Leo, so who else is a Leo? You know what it is, <laughs> right? Am I like you? You you know you you want to be competitive. You want to push the envelope. So I um the competitive spirit. You gotta let somebody else. Well, here, wait. I want to explain something to you. Every new DJ that comes up anywhere, right? I saw, I'm, I'm naming, I, I like these instances because I remember. I remember one guy came in the club, he got the club jumping. He's tearing the club down. I respect it too. So I remember one time he shook my hand a couple months prior and he gave me a shake like this and his hand on the back. Any motherfucker that puts his hand on my back, that means, nigga, you trying to sign me off? You mean I'm done? <laughs> so when that hand hit my back, I was like, oh, this nigga think I'm finished. I go see him in the club. He got security, bottle of champagne, two chicks. <laughs> cool. I go on the next day on the radio, I shit on him. Because <laughs> he thought we was friends. But hold now, on. Oh. But you don't start no beef. You just answer it. He started with the hand on the back. <laughs> started it with the hand on the back. Don't put your hand on my back. <laughs> I shit on him. He crawls up in the corner. He doesn't say nothing. I turn the radio on to listen. He got that club. I started a club across the street from him. I don't want your club. I'm not a hater. I don't want your club. Stay there. I'm a star right here. <laughs> Let's see what it's going to be. <laughs> you want to be the best? You feel you can take me? We're not going to do smoke and mirrors, nigga. We're going to do the same block. You there, me there. And we see what it is after a couple months. 
Now, I respect that guy. I'm not gonna say his name. He's one of the two guys I respect the most because he challenged me and he fought me for many months in that club. Him and another DJ. I'm gonna tell you the two DJs name. I respect them the most. It's a DJ named Goldfinger and it's DJ Self. Those two guys I got the most respect for because even though they, <laughs> you know, even though it, it worked out in my favor, I respect them. I want, want that smoke too. And we would, we, you know, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something that, that this, is a, this is a DJ Self story. So there was a time, we was on, when we was on the radio, he was up against me when he first got on. He, was on, he got on on a Friday night, or maybe just, it was a Friday. Now I'm gonna I'm keep it a thousand. I used to stay home on Fridays, I used to make a tape. And I, my competitor figured out, yo, he's not even up there on Friday. So we could put a nigga here. I got the word by accident that they was gonna put him on on my night that I'm stay home. I'm in the house during the week. I'm like, I ain't going down there, man. I don't watch this TV, man. Fuck everybody. I'm not nigga. It starts getting closer to Friday. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going down there. <laughs> now, I got the everything, the cars, the music, kids. Food, chef. I was like, that's how I kind of got on. I'll go down. I start going down every Friday night. And when, when me and the, I, I knew my competitive, the PD, we had the biggest numbers that radio had ever seen in years. Because I got him on in the other room, he got me on in the other room. So I'm playing, but I got the competitors on where I can hear. And he got me on in the other room. He's <laughs> If they go to a commercial, I'm like, yo, go to commercial now. The niggas went to commercial, go to commercial. We gotta, we gotta get out quicker. <laughs> but I'm older, I'm like, I don't know, I'm 40 at the time. But I knew that this is the make or break. So. I wanted to compete, but I respect he competed too. Now, I'm a Leo, you're not gonna outstamina me. You know, because I already know what, what you think. He's old and he's not gonna keep doing it. Once I get you out of that mindset, then it's like, okay, he's just gonna keep coming. So I gotta figure out another thing. Now, the DJ Goldfinger, now these are the reasons I said there's the two DJs I respect the most. We yeah? Go go. Goldfinger had this club, Envy, on fire. Not him, but his man said, tell Flex, Flex is Jordan, is Flex is Jordan, Cole, uh, uh, Goldfinger's Colby. I said, why'd you say that's a joke you're tired, nigga. What you, what you say? <laughs> he said, he got new rings, you got old rings. This was like 06, 05. The promoter, they killing it. Pro clubs jam. There's no club across the street. I can't open up. So I don't even have that in my mind yet. I said, when he's away, can I play? He went out of town. They hired me for one. I don't want to say I turned the place up town down. I played horrible because I was in my car show mode. I didn't know the right records to play. I wasn't up on my music. He got the best of me, round one. My street team and everybody said, I said, how'd I do last night? Nigga, he wasn't in. 
I don't get mad at them to tell me the truth. Give me the truth. Cool. So now I don't have no leverage to get back in there because I stunk up the joint. They come to me and say, we kind of want you to shout it because you want to play. So now they don't even want me because I'm on town because I didn't have any at the time. I, you know, I've had periods in my career, two, three years, where I don't play well. And I'm, I, you know, because I know that happens, I, I take it on the chin. So I play with them once again. Yo, know, what time can I play? Three o'clock or something. Now, well, mind you, I went back, I went through that in the 90s. Now, this is 2000s happening the fucking game. <laughs> I said, no problem. Now, you know, I make good money in the club. So, you know, if you're a hot DJ and you, you know, you could get four to five thousand, right? They said they got a thousand, thinking I'm gonna say no. Nah. No, nah, give me the thousand. We play every week. The guy's talented. He's hitting the records, he's hitting the records, and I'm like. Now, everybody kept saying in the street, you gonna win because your personality is bigger than his and you, you gonna get on the mic and get the crowd riled up. I did no microphone. I said, I'm not gonna use the mic. He's not gonna use the mic. We just gonna play. Now, the, the club got five, 600. Now it's 900, 1,000. It's popping. Now, I never told him this, but I was about to quit because I was so fucking tired. This nigga's wearing me out every week. The promoter, you know, there was a night I was sitting in the back. I was sleepy because I didn't go to the club till two. I get off at 12, I'm sleeping. I was going to quit any week. The promoter calls me, yo, man, Goldfinger just quit. He said he just can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I hung up the phone like, thank God, nigga. I'm tired. <laughs> But he went toe to toe with me for a super long time. And he wasn't intimidated by me. And he was going hard, but I learned from him too because I learned shit he was playing, he learned from me. We've joked about it since then. And it was competitive and I love it. And I like those two guys because they compete against me. And I want to compete. I don't, I don't want it handed to me. I don't want backdoor shit, I want to compete. So going back to the crown, you're gonna have to do it better than me. or. or I don't plan on handing it over. Who does that? <laughs> like, why would we do that? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, just I got a competitor. Anybody can sign on. Yo, I, I compete against. There's there's like twenty radio stations on when I'm on Z100, Power Five, KTU. They know they don't win in my slot. You you're not gonna be more in tune. A DJ's job is to find out what the people like in the street and bring it to the radio. Every DJ can't be DJ Khaled. Khaled is a special, unique person with a passion that is ungodly. It's different. You, my company doesn't hire me to be a, a to be to drink champagne and to be a personality. Your job is to is to find music in the street and bring it to the masses we give you. Find it in a club and bring it to the bigger masses. Cause this place where you can where you can log on and you can you can uh, stream and you can play and you can hear in five boroughs. Your job is to bring the best to that job. That's it. So when DJs want to make records and be all all type of shit. <laughs> That's not what the companies hire us for at all. They buy you to spend. So I've never lost track of what my job is, where I work. That's why guys don't beat me. You know, they don't, you gotta do your job. If you're both making burgers, for you to get the manager slot, you gotta make those burgers quicker and faster than me to get to the manager slot. It's the same thing. You gotta do it better than me to get, to, to get past me. And, and that's not, and guess what? I don't know if there are any DJs in here. Oh, there's anybody who's a DJ who plays music? One day, hey! <laughs> so, in, in, in the DJ game, I'm gonna tell you something. If that DJ that's, I, let me say this right. If there's another DJ that plays in the clubs and plays on the radio, and you take money to play whack records, you're never gonna beat me, son. Cause you're playing the wrong shit. 
It's mathematics. I always tell you it's offline. I wish I was a DJ. <laughs> I would, you, you love it. The I would love it. But being as it may, yes, yes. closing this out, right? Best mm -hmm. advice you ever got? From people or just general? In life. Is it a, well, advice? The best advice you ever got. Even if it's not in words, maybe you saw some. Um, I, I gotta go back to Reveler. Him letting me see shit and, and, and learning to earn my money. You know, outside of the music business and being dishonest. That was probably the most important thing that I learned because I appreciated it years later. I appreciated it, you know. Here, here's the people you said I argued with: Cardi B, Drake, Jay Z. Who else? Nikki. Who said Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Nikki fan. I love Nikki. Who said it? Not nobody. Wants. You remember that one the most, right? You saw the way you raised your hand. Okay, no, I understand. So here, all those artists we named, right? If I'd have took a penny from them early in their career, what's the first thing they would have said when we started arguing? I paid you, I paid you nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I always knew they were built like that. Because I'm like, I didn't take your money. Now I'm going to tell you about yourself. <laughs> but I, it's nothing bad. Now listen, what did I say? I said that Drake had reference tracks. Did he? I just want to know the best advice you ever got. Oh. No, I'm, I'm, just, like, I'm saying it as, like, look at them, look what they're all mad at me. Nikki's mad at me, it was, was, just so you know, one of those artists I'm very good with now with friends. But you're not good with Drake. I like Drake. I know you like Drake, but you're not good. But, all right. next question. All right, all right. I am, I am, I, I swear, man. I, you ready? Yeah. Worst advice you ever No. Had. You said best advice I think was 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 red. Was red? I mean from an artist. I don't care where it's from. Just no, best I advice. mean I think that was I think that was my key, man. That was I don't think he knew he was giving me the best. I didn't think I didn't know at the time he was giving me the best advice. Well I'm saying it because there's somebody in this room who can benefit from it. Next question is what's the worst advice you ever got? The worst advice I ever got from somebody was somebody saying, you need to take every penny from what this game has to offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The worst advice he ever gave me. This is outside of taking for He was in the playing. music business at the time, and he was hot. Okay. And it was the worst. Looking back, <clears throat> you disclosed your age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what advice do you give to your 23-year-old self? Um, and really think about this one. If there's anything I could beg you not to do, is take a shortcut. And when I say a shortcut, not a short, not a money short anything, but a shortcut like, look, you know if you walk up the hill on the left side, slowly, you're still gonna get to the top, right? A car can come by and say, I'll give you a ride. I don't know, maybe you won't think as much. Maybe ideas won't pop in your head as much. Don't take the ride. Be fine with the long way. Because the long way, I, I'll tell you something. For me, and I, I can speak for me, even, even the people we named, from a Drake to a Cardi B, who I've had a little bit, but I can tell you something about all those people. All those people started from the bottom. Jay-Z, Drake, um, Lil Wayne, it started from the bottom, and they were very persistent about staying in the game and doing what they want to do. And a lot of, all of those guys, I did not believe in. You know, I didn't believe in those artists. I didn't, I didn't you know, they were never even on my radar heavy. And they proved me wrong. And I, I, I love that part. <laughs>
you know? And I think that if you're in your 20s, man, my career didn't take off till I was like 28. And, you know, I'm still okay with that, you know? Because you, you gotta like learn, see the right avenue, because everybody knows where to go, but what do you do when you get there? And you're only gonna learn that part by, by, by not taking shortcuts. If there's anything I tell the young, don't take shortcuts. Everybody, give it up for Funk Flex. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.